What's up YouTube fans? Today we're going to take a look at the Iron Trans Star Blade, their version of a Star Saber. Uh, here's the box, uh, kind of a cool image here, it almost reminds you of the movie. Oh, just this uh, schematic here. Got some images on the side of the actual uh, render and then on the back you get some product shots. You also get instructions and here are those. These are also very low, low Low cost, they, they work fine, there's nothing wrong with them. They're just big pieces of paper, very simple, black and white. Uh, sort of reminds me of, you know, knockoff instructions, but they're good enough for, for our purposes. So let's get this guy out here and take a look at how good he really is. And here is everything that comes with the package. You get a lot of stuff uh, with this guy. And just like the official Takara Tomy Star Saber, he does come with the, you know, the three levels, you get the Brain Master. If I get the names wrong, by the way, you know, don't hold me to that because I never really watched Victory, so I don't know them that these characters that well. But I think this is the Brain Master, this is the Saber figure, and then fully combined is the Star Saber. And, you know, it it is kind of cool. You know, it's uh, it's almost like a Russian nesting doll. That's kind of the way I, th I think of this. It, you know, they kind of go in together. Um, and you get all the gimmicks just like you do with the Takara Tomy version. There's probably some other gimmicks that you get with that that you don't get with this. Like, for example, a flight stand. It would have been nice to have a flight stand. Um, but here's everything you get. We're going to go through all of this. I'm going to start with just here's how Saber comes in the package. Uh, he's not fully transformed, so you kind of got to get him transformed. So first thing is you pull these arms out and get them kind of upwards like that. Pull down on this and they're just accordions downwards or combiner wars downwards. And then fold out the hand. And, and these are just pegged in so if it comes off you just put it back on. And then same on this side. Uh, and then you want to get the feet. So the feet just kind of flip down. Uh, I wish they locked in place. They don't really lock in place but they do flip down. Every single joint on both figures, the, the large figure, the little figure, the only one that's really not that tight is this one, but everything else, every joint everywhere is tight. Nothing is really loose. Um, there's one loose joint that is actually kind of a problem. I'll show you a little bit later. Uh, but for the most part, all of the articulating joints for this figure are, are pretty well done. So let's take a look at this and I'll show you the G1 victory image there and really nicely done and great job uh, fully painted all the way down every piece of plastic except for maybe these joint pieces here and here I think that the entire thing is painted you can stand them up here on these feet although I, I do find a little bit irritating just because you got to pose the the feet a little bit to get them to stand but it looks good Articulation wise, his head is on a rotating swivel, so it goes all the way around, it goes up to there, down to there. Arm can rotate all the bottom, but it is uh, hindered by that back piece, so you can, you kind of got to work around that a little bit. And it goes up to there on that transformation joint. You get a 90 degree bend at the elbow, a swivel at the wrist. And you can actually swap out these hands. I find these to be a little too big. They, they seem like they're not in proportion with his body, especially when you compare it to the size of the fist hands. They just seem a little bit like the fingers are too long or something. I don't know. Maybe they're okay. But for me, it just, I don't need them. I'll just stick with the, with the fists here. But that does rotate. No uh, finger articulation on either set of hands. Uh, there is a waist swivel, but it is severely hindered. It just kind of bumps, and I don't see any way to to use it. So you get a little tiny waist swivel that would have been would have been there if uh, they didn't have that thing in the way. Uh, you do get not a real ab crunch, but because the legs, the thighs rotate, you can kind of pretend. You get the legs go up to there. Back to there, hindered by this, you get a 90 degree bend at the knee. The knee does bend backwards, but that's really for transformation, so you can go the other direction. But um, everything is tight there, and that's plenty of motion. You don't need any more motion than that. 
the feet there are there is no real ankle tilt or ankle pivot unfortunately on these they're kind of fixed you can tilt the toe up and down but that's really it uh, but overall for a small figure like this you know kind of a I guess a deluxe size whatever you would call this scale pretty good articulation there is with the sword and that looks really nice it's nice that they included that it is very tight to get in there and you kind of have to wiggle it to get it in and he can also hold this gun if you leave it on the peg, the round peg side, that will fit in his hand. Again, another tight fit, but he can hold this gun too and be double wielding or whatever. So nice that it does fit. Obviously, it's very big for him, but it looks good. Uh, by the way, here's the Brain Master. Let's get in close. Hopefully my hands are not super in the way. Well, don't focus on him. There we go. So there's the Brain Master. You can see they put some detail into this. Just amazing. You got the that gold piece on the chest. You got painted toes. I mean, it's just crazy what they've done with this paint. Uh, it doesn't do a lot. I mean, the, the arms do go up and down. This reminds me of those, uh, and it's kind of loose actually, but... It reminds me of those world's smallest. They do basically as much as that. So both legs go up and the arms go and you can get him in the cockpit. The head doesn't rotate. Um, but pretty good detail for something this small. Pretty impressive. Uh, you can't put that in his chest. It doesn't have the, you know, headmaster or whatever you want to call it, the gimmick to make his head pop up based on having the like the uh, MP24, whatever the Star Saber, the Takara Tomy Masterpiece Star Saber. You can just kind of set him in there. He sits in there and close the chest and he stays in there. He's okay. He's fine. All right, so let's get this into the combined mode so I can show you how that works. All right, so go ahead and we'll put the arms back in. So fold up the hands and then combiner boards down the... Uh, wrists or the uh, forearms and then put this back down into here make sure you have that collapsed all the way down otherwise it's not gonna fit properly into his chest those white pieces will, will bump so make sure you have that all the way in okay. now take his legs you can fold up his feet and then take these legs and these are going to Basically, uh, accordion. Oops. These are going to accordion upwards and basically come up against his chest and make a sort of a square. Okay, so put these together. Those just tab together like that. Uh, you can lift these little gold panels out of the way uh, just to avoid having them get scratched. Uh, but they will auto transform out of the way for you, so you don't have to wor worry too much. So fold the legs so that they're 90 degrees and then fold the rest on this joint here and you'll see that it comes at an angle. At first I thought, you know, this has got to be mistransformed, but no, nope, that's that's how it goes. It goes at like a, a little weird angle there. So go ahead and fold the chest in until it meets the chest. You can actually see the two tabs are going to fit in right here and just sits right up against the, the chest of the other robot. And this is the chest of Star Saber. Looks pretty good. Okay. And now that's going to just slide right in. So let's show you that. Let's go ahead and slide this down in. And make sure you're clearing all those little tabs. And once you've got to pass that first tab, here's where you can kind of look from the side and see how it's pegging in. And it, it, it's, it's a little... It doesn't inspire a lot of confidence, and you should see the wing sticks out there and there on both sides, and it just sits there. It doesn't really peg in, you know, convincingly. And then you can close these arms back down, and they just butt up against the arms of the inner robot. Uh, might as well take a look at his head sculpt. Really nice head sculpt. He's got that gold paint. You got a little bit of gunmetal accents. You got gunmetal antenna. Really beautifully done. Great, great face sculpt there. Dare I say better than the Takara Tomy. 
I don't know. Okay, so the way you put this on is you push this mask up and then you want to angle it forward so that it's down on top of the head. So push it down and then backwards over the head and it's a little tricky to get it. You'll, and you'll feel it. Okay, so that went on. And I can feel it's it's pretty tight on there. And the mask kind of auto transforms down back onto the top of the face. And we'll give you the G1 cartoon. Uh, these don't tend to have... Uh, normally I use the Sunbow chart or the animation model images. But since we don't have animation model images for these, we're just going to use a shot from the cartoon. The best one I can find that kind of shows you Star Saber. But let's go over articulation. This thing is loaded with articulation. It does a lot. So the head, again, it's that same rotating swivel, but now you got the other, other head on top of it. So it's a little bit more limited, but you get up and down. Uh, if And if you go too high, it ends up coming off. So that's one of the disadvantages of having a head like this. But that's the gimmick. This, That's actually how it transformed in the show. His head, you know, fold forward from the back. And so you kind of have to have that gimmick where you can have the little head like this, you know, saber head. It's actually really tiny, but um, that's just, that's part of the show. That's that's very accurate to the show. Uh, so yeah, so you get the, the articulation on the ears. You can also move the ears back and forth. So if you wanted them downwards, if you wanted them to be cannons, which I believe they are in the ship mode, in the V-Star. Uh, you can do like that, although I don't think that looks so good. But you have the option. Uh, you can articulate these wings, so these wings can come forward up to there, and then you can kind of angle them upwards. You can get them all the way down back here, and kind of hide them in against the chest. Problem is they start colliding with the arms, so that doesn't really work too well, but you could do that for different pictures or poses or whatever you wanted to do. Uh, the arms are quite complex. I'm going to try to show you everything on the arms. So if you open this up, by the way, there's some detail inside that when you open that up, which is kind of neat. And you open that up, you open up this panel here. That gives you additional articulation, so the arm can go all the way up to there. And while you're doing it, this piece can, can go like this. So that piece rotates upwards as you do that. It really feels like... Gundam or, you know, some Bandai product, uh, you know, even Solid Jigokan. It feels kind of like a Solid Jigokan, the way things just move and it's smooth. Uh, there are no ratchets on this guy. They're all friction joints and all the friction joints are tolerant very, very well. I'm very impressed. Uh, you get a double jointed elbow that gets you all the way up to there. It's only hindered by the fact that it hits, but um, plenty of articulation there on that elbow and it feels buttery smooth. It feels great. All right, continuing on with the articulation, you do have a rotation at the wrist and you have individually articulated fingers at one, two, three joints. All the fingers, including the thumb, um, lots and lots of articulation. The fingers are kind of long. Uh, uh, they also do splay out like that. But I mean, the most possibly articulated hand you could have on these. So very nicely done. Very impressed. Uh, the hands are also fully painted, which is also impressive. Um, there's really nothing that's not painted on this. Pretty much everything. As far as die cast, uh, you have die cast. This entire chest piece, everything from here down is up to this uh, abdomen is all die cast. Uh, the hardware in the elbows and in the knees, all die cast. Parts of the um, inner piece are die cast. Uh, let's see. I think part of these legs also. I'm feeling back here feels kind of cold. I, I, I think this is die cast as well. So just tons and tons of die cast on this thing. Really, really uh, impressively, impressive materials on this. All right, continuing on with articulation, you do get quite a bit of ab crunch. So you get motion down here, which I can show you goes back to there. And oops, let's just get this arm out of the way. And then it goes forward to there. So you can see there's a crunch here and a crunch here. So just tons and tons of articulation. You also get a rotation and it feels really tight. At first I wasn't even sure there was one, but you gotta rotate. I recommend holding here. 
you can see there's that rotation. It does get kind of held up right here on the back, so that's about as far as you can go, but it's got it. So I'm going to give it to them. They've got a good waist rotation. Uh, but these go up and out of the way. And the legs are on these die cast joints here. And you really get uh, let's see, crazy, crazy kick all the way up to there. Just unbelievable articulation. Um, back to here, but that's because it's hindered right there. So it doesn't go any further back than that. And then out on another friction joint. All of these are very beautifully tolerant. None of them are loose. They don't feel like they're getting loose either. I've been playing with this for a day or two. Okay, so moving on, you do have a double jointed knee. Gets you all the way up to there. This die cast joint plus this plastic joint. Uh, they're both colored so that it kind of hides away pretty, pretty nicely. You get a thigh rotation, which is up built into the, the hip. You get a ankle tilt. You have to make sure this ankle is pulled all the way out because it tends to, um, you know, go it, for transformation, it gets pushed back in. So you gotta make sure it's all the way out. You don't get a lot of ankle tilt. You get a little bit this way, a little bit that way. Uh, but, Right, so that's really all articulation. Uh, you do get weapons with this guy. So the hands are basically slotted. So you've got that slot right there. And you put the handles of the weapons in there. So for the gun, the gun actually fits in. It's actually kind of squarish. And the squarish handle fits in there. And you can hold that just like that. And then on the other hand, since these are not the typical masterpiece style, I'm actually showing you how they go in. Normally I don't even bother with that, but because these are a little bit different. Now this one is kind of a circle-ish hole. So if you don't want a double wheel and you just wanted to pose, you could kind of put this in here, just slide that into his hand, it slides right down. It's a little tight, but you can get it in there. And then you can close the hand fist around. Uh, very convincing fist, by the way. Now, if you wanted to use the long handle, again, you can open this up, open this up, flip this back in, and then you're going to take this handle, and you can see there's two slots here. Those are going to slide onto the end of the other handle. Pretty ingenious little design. There you go, now you have the long hill. Now he can double wield this if he needs to. I did that kind of quickly. I, I didn't really want to spend too much time <laughs> posing it. Uh, but yeah, he, he can do that and it looks good. And it's, it's, it's well done. You know, they really give him enough articulation to be able to do stuff like that. Okay, to start off, let's get the head removed because we're not going to need this for the transformation. In fact, you can just fold it up, fold the ears down. They auto kind of transform these side pieces. You can't pull them out once you fold them down. And, and this is how you want it anyways for the V-Star. So kind of set that aside. Then get this chest piece pulled out. It really just pulls out very easily. Um, obviously pull it gently. You know, don't uh, force anything. It should just slide right out. Uh, and if you have any trouble just open up the arms a little bit and that will give a little bit more wiggle room. So I'm going to set that to the side. So we're gonna take care of this first. So we do have a little bit of work to do. So go ahead and open up these legs back this way. You're gonna leave the arms where they are. Those are just gonna stay tucked at his side. You're gonna take these legs. And you're gonna fold them upwards on this joint here, all the way forward so that it sits kind of flush on that back piece there. So you should have that on both sides. If you don't have that, make sure you have this gold piece folded down. So you should have something like that. And then now these two are going to peg around this little tab right here. So go ahead and peg that in. And this is a little bit of a tight fit, so make sure you have it all squeezed together. And all these tabs are going to fit back together. There you go. Squeeze that together, and then you're going to take these tabs or sorry, these wings, and put them all the way down. I'm going to sit all the way down here. 
Actually, we're going to do the jet mode first. So let's get that into jet mode. So I'll go ahead and open up these wings. You'll see there's a hole and a tab right there on the top of the arm. Let's go ahead and peg that in to the top of the arm. And again, if you don't, it's not lining up, then make sure you move the arm to the right position. Same on this side, go ahead, tab that in. And then back here, you can open up these. I like to have it like this, so basically sitting right underneath, and then open up the bottom wing here. So you'd have like basically two wings there. Same on this side, open this, push this downwards, and then open up this bottom wing. So it should look something like that. Right, now we're going to get the nose cone, so that's the last piece. The nose cone is the star blade, or the, sorry, the uh, sword. So go ahead and remove the blade from the sword and just set that aside. And you don't need this either, so go ahead and remove the longer alternate handle and set that aside. And really all you need is this piece. So go ahead and close this nose cone back up, pick that together. And here's where things are going to fit together. So. Take this and you'll see there's two slots on the top of his back here and that's where these two pegs are going to fit in. So go ahead and put that around his head and peg that in. And then close that panel and that's his nose cone. And there you have the jet. And it looks pretty good. Uh, I, I'm going to try to put an image here of the G1 version of this. It does have landing gear. Now the front landing gear actually folds out and it's a little bit tough to get to so you probably want a spudger. Let's go ahead and grab a spudger and there's the front landing gear but the rear landing gear are actually a separate piece and they fit in right here. It's actually a little bit of a pain to get them in. So go ahead and open this up. You'll see there's a peg. There's two pegs. They're going to fit right into these legs and then the front part of it Gonna fit right into his crotch, I'll call it. <laughs> and go ahead and squeeze that back together. And now you've got that landing gear in there. And there you have him in his jet mode with the wheels. It rolls very nicely. All the wheels roll really nicely on this guy. I just I, I don't really like the fact that you have this parts forming piece, but how often are you gonna have it in this jet mode? But either way, really nice looking jet mode. There is a feature here so you can open up this canopy. I do recommend a, a spudger to get in there. Um, it doesn't go any further than that, or at least I'm afraid to go any further than that. You can take the Brain Master, which we still have in the chest here. He's still in here. Go ahead and take that out. Just fold his legs downwards. Um, the legs aren't very tight, so they tend to fall, but stick him in there. And there he is inside the cockpit. And that looks good. That really is reminiscent of the show. I think they did a good job and it looks good through the canopy. Or as Bobby says, can of peas. So good job with that. Good job with the jet. All in all, really nice job with this separate jet here. I, th I think it, it looks really good. All right, so let's get this transformed into the mode it's gonna have to be in to combine it with the V-Star. So go ahead and fold this back up and just leave it like that for now. Uh, you're going to take out this landing gear, so pop this apart, pull off the landing gear, just set that aside. We're not going to be able to use that here. And then you can just push this back together. You're going to fold up these wings and these wings are going to basically fold downwards and sit like that. Same on this side, keep those downwards. So when you're done, you should have something like this with these wings upwards. Uh, and this is ready and positioned for combining. Okay, so for V-Star, there are some more complicated parts and there's some that are you know kind of easy. So we'll, we'll try to go step by step. I am going to do one side and then cut to the other side being done just so we can save time for transfusion. Go ahead and open this panel here. You want to have uh, this arm kind of 
flattened down. They show it differently in the picture, but you know, my recommendation is have it flattened like this and then put the thumb this way and that's going to cause the least amount of interference when you put it in. Uh, then you rotate it this way and then that's going to fold inside his arm. If it's not going in, that means you can fold it upwards this way like this and that gets the end of the elbow out of the way. So go ahead and fold that in there and then peg that in and you should see it should line up. If it doesn't line up, make an adjustment. Close that up. Okay, then we're going to open up this panel here that we talked about before, for, mostly for articulation. So open this up and that's going to accordion down. And as you do that, you're going to see there's a, this is on a slider. So let's see if I can show you that. So you can see there's a slider joint and you want to slide this kind of around and over this piece here. So that's that's where you're trying to head. And it's a little tricky, you gotta get it at the right angle, but also it's gotta, it's gotta go down. And you end up something like that. Um, oh, sorry, make sure you open this panel or you're not gonna be able to get it down there. It's gonna, it's gonna run into that. So once you have it down, then you can close this panel and this panel. And just leave that squared off like that. So we're going to do the same on this side, so we're going to do that kind of off camera. So now that we have the arms transformed, we're going to start working on the legs. Legs are a little bit more complicated, but not, you know, too crazy or anything. So go ahead and rotate the leg this way, but then rotate the knee back this way so it ends up forward. Alright, so go ahead, now that you have uh, this open, you're going to bend at this knee. And then push this panel in, and that's going to allow you to bend back again at the other knee. And so you end up with something like this. Okay. Then you're going to take the leg, the foot, fold this up until it hits the bar. And then fold this piece all the way down. And then fold the foot down. So you should end up with kind of a straight looking piece like that. And then that whole piece is going to push into the leg. Uh, you kind of want to get the, the top underneath, so it's a little bit tricky. Um, but you want to push this in such that you can get that in there. There we go. Something like that. All right, and uh, leave these wings down for now. You'll see the issue I have here, but um, those are going to go upwards at the end So that's kind of really it for that one leg. So I'm going to try to do Yeah, this is This is tough. So I'm going to try to do the other leg off camera and then we'll be right back. So you should end up with something like this and now I can show you how to get these arms pegged in so you can see this peg is still sticking out and there's a slot and it should just tab right in. Um, I feel like it is going to scratch the paint there but that's the price I pay for showing you how to transform it. So same on the other side, just peg this in and that will kind of stabilize the arms in place so they're not moving around. Okay. Uh, and now we're going to work on the backpack. Uh, you can see these are just irritating for me, honestly. So go ahead and pull this off the back. It's just pegged in right here. Uh, you can set this down, actually. I'll just make things a little easier. Open up these panels. They, they accordion outwards. And when you do that, flip out this panel here. And then get this all the way down. So same on this side. Open this up. Flip out the panel, and then fold this down. And this is what secures the entire thing together. Uh, really, actually, pretty ingenious the way they did this. So go ahead, fold this down. I'm going to work one side, and then I'll, sh I'll do the other side off camera. So there's going to be one, two, I don't know why I lost focus there. Going to be one, two, three, four pegging points. So you're going to start from the back and work your way forward. That's how this is going to work. So go ahead and get the back leg pressed in, making sure that the other stuff is still lining up. 
So I got one back panel, two, three, and we'll try to get this one. That one is not quite. If the top one doesn't line up, that means you probably didn't have this collapse all the way down. Um, but that's why I like to show you if I make a mistake there, you'll know how to fix it. Okay, so now I've got all, all four points pegged in and it's all secured. So we're gonna do the other side and we'll do that off camera. All right, once you have both sides pegged in, and I will be, admit there is quite a bit of pushing and pulling. It doesn't feel so great. It's a little bit scary, but then you can open up these wings here on the rear. These are supposed to sit flat, but for whatever reason, they flop around like crazy. So I'm just gonna leave them up for now. Uh, you're going to want the landing gear out because otherwise it's sitting flat on these. And I know I had it on there while I was transforming. So you risk scratching the paint as you do that. So you really want the, the landing gear out. And these, I mean, they're okay. They, they don't feel like they're going to break, but they just look flimsy. I don't love the landing gear. But they work. Okay, so you fold those out and you've got four sets of landing gear. Now you can set it on its own weight. Let's take care of this first. This is actually the hardest piece to, to put in out of the entire transformation. Uh, and this really comes down to the angle. So you've got to get the angle right. You really have to get this sort of in here. First of all, you got to put it in cockeyed and get it in there first. That's really the first step. And it's not easy. It's actually kind of irritating. Okay, so that's kind of how I get it in there, is I sort of rotate it into place. Now that you have it like that, then you can kind of peg it in, and there's two pegs, there's one here and there's one there. And so you kind of have to put one side in first, and it's going to peg in right there. And I'm going to zoom in so you can see that. So, let's see. You're going to peg it in right there. And that's kind of hard because you got to get one side in and then you're going to push the other side down. My particular copy is pretty tight, so it's challenging to get it up and in there, but you can do it. All right, there you go. It's tabbed in. Uh, and it also sits back on some pegs back here, but it's very hard to see and even show you. And for uh, finishing touches, you can take the head and just set that right on there. It just kind of sits there. It's not very secure, honestly. And then you can take the gun and make sure you have the round peg exposed. And that's going to sit right there. And that's the V-Star mode. Now, there are some display options. You can move the angles of these, although mine are super loose. And they've gotten looser and looser, and now they don't hold at all. So they just kind of hit the ground, unfortunately. Uh, you also can angle these a different way if you want these down. They do uh, collide with these red pieces here, so I tend to leave them up like this. But that's your choice. You can display that however you like. And overall, pretty good looking. Let's take a quick 360. We'll put an image of the G1 cartoon over here. And pretty nice. V-Star mode. Uh, if I had to make a complaint, I would say this is probably the weakest of all the modes of this particular toy. This one doesn't, um, just doesn't hold together well. It does look good. I'll, I'll give them that. It's got great paint, great design. Uh, you can open these up if you wanted some additional, I don't know, armor or whatever it is. You could open that up if you want. But overall, pretty nice looking jet mode. I do find that the landing gear does go in when you don't want it to. It does roll on those four landing gear pretty nice and smooth. It's a very heavy figure so when you got a lot of die cast and you got those wheels it tends to roll really nicely. So final thoughts on this guy. I think they've really nailed the victory G1 look of this Star Saber. Just absolutely beautiful. The paint and the quality of the figure 
um, all around, you know, the sculpt, everything just looks amazing on this thing. And the Star Saber mode is really where it um, shines the most because it just, the aesthetic and the, and the look and the colors and the detail, everything hits for me. Um, where it doesn't hit for me is the V-Star mode. It does look good. But this is really a bummer for me that just kind of ruined the experience. Everything on here is tunneling so beautifully. All of the joints, everything. And then you get to this and it kind of like, you know, deflates you. You know, why why didn't they, weren't they able to tolerance this? I did reach out to East Coast, East Coast Toys and I asked them about that. And they said they'll take a look and let me know what they can do for me. Um, they may either get a new figure or may get a part. I don't know. We'll find out. But in the meantime, I'll probably put some uh, floor polish in there to tighten that up. But that's really the only, you know, major issue I have with this thing. You know, they did a great job in, in all the modes. I really like the Star Saber mode the most. I do like the Saber mode in both the, the bot and the, and the vehicle, the jet. Those are both pretty good. The V-Star mode is pretty good with the exception of this. Uh, combining them together was definitely a challenge. And, and that's kind of the weakness of this entire set is putting it together in the V-Star mode. And it, it's It's kind of clunky and you do end up scratching some of the paint doing that i don't really like doing that so i'll probably keep it in this mode <laughs> but i do like to transform my stuff so i want to be able to do that so that's really it for today i do have some other figures coming up soon for our master priest scale hopefully we'll get those in and we can take a look at those but thanks for watching if you have any comments or questions i'll leave them in the comments below but we will see you next time